antiderivative formulas. This is basically what we've achieved so far in the class. And you've done a whole lot of use ofs to use the to get your form into one of those forms. So that's pretty much almost every antiderivative you've calculated is based off one of those forms. And all you did was make it either a U substitution, do some clever algebra to turn into that form. So that could pretty much summarize every antiderivative you've done so far. So what's going to happen now is you're going to get techniques that are similar to but different from U substitution. So unfortunately, you can't just say, oh, I'm going to U sub and then turn this into an integral I know. So there is more techniques than just U substitution. So it's important to understand what you're about to learn. So you're learning more techniques. So you learn to use substitution sometimes last, last quarter or potentially at the beginning of this quarter. You learn to use sub technique. So we're going to learn what could be called the anti-product rule. It's not called the anti-product rule because it's not really, it doesn't look like a product. Uh, we're going to derive it by doing the product rule. Uh, hopefully this will make a lot of sense very soon. So this is called integration by parts. And what we're going to first do is just a general derivative of f times g. So we're going to take a derivative of fx times gx. So this should not be anything monumental. f prime x gx plus fx g prime x. All right, so that's how the product rule works. So nothing surprising there. So what we're going to do is take this equation I just wrote down, we all agree is true, and I'm going to take the antiderivative of both sides. So we all agree that we're starting out with a true equation, and I'm going to take the antiderivative of both sides with respect to x. So I just took both sides and basically put an antiderivative and a dx on both sides. So let's look at let's look at the left side. That's way easier to look at. If we look, we're going to take an integral of a derivative right here. So those are going to cancel out right there. So we're taking an integral of a derivative, so they're going to cancel out. So the first one is just f of x times g of x. Now on the right side, what can I do on the right side? The only thing I can really do is split up the integration across the plus. So this is integral of the first plus the integral of the second. So I'm going to split this up. Integral f prime x gx dx plus integral fx g prime x dx. The last thing we're going to do is subtract. We want to get which one by itself. It doesn't really matter which one we get by itself. We'll do the one with the g prime by itself. So I'm going to solve for what I just underlined. So all I'm going to do is subtract the other integral to the left side. Finally, I'm just, I just want to write the integral, just switch the size of the equation. So I'm just going to take the mirror image of the equation. So we have integral, and I'm going to get lazy and just write f g dx, or f g prime dx equals f times g minus integral 
f prime g times g dx. So if we look at this last version right here, when we take out all the of x of x of x of x stuff, what really happens? You're basically moving the prime from the g to the f. So that's basically what's happening right here. And we all sort of followed along as I did all the steps. So what is the cost of doing that? The cost is you have to, you have to make that negative and then add f times g right here. So we're going to make some uh, change out some of these for u's and v's and du and dv. So I'm going to let u equal u equal f of x and v equal g of x. So if there's u and v, du is going to be f prime of x dx. I'm just basically making a u sub. And then same thing for v, the dv equals g prime x dx. So basically just making a u and a v sub right now. So I'm going to very carefully look at what I'm subbing out. So g prime dx is dv. So g prime x dx is dv. So what I underlined is dv. And then what is regular f? Regular f of x is just u. f times g, that's just u times v minus integral. What I'm underlining, f prime dx is du. So f prime dx that I underlined is du. And then g is just v. This form that I just wrote down is how you should use integration by parts. That's the one that's going to be the most useful for you. Uh, use the least amount of letters, and I'm pretty sure it's exactly the way it appears inside your textbook. All right, making a integration by parts substitution feels sort of like a u sub, except it's a little bit different. You pick a u and a dv, and then you compute what is uh, v and du. So it feels like a u sub. You're going to pick. So you're going to pick what is u and what is dv. So you're going to pick u and you're going to pick dv. Then you're going to compute du, just like you did on a u sub, and v. So it's, you, don't, you pick dv, and then v is the antiderivative. So you pick dv, and then you compute the antiderivative. All right, so what's the big deal? What can we do with this? So we're going to go through a series of examples that hopefully will make this clear. So first one we're going to go with, and there are certain guidelines as to what's a good u, what's a bad u, what's a good v, uh, dv, and what's a bad dv. And I'll try to pick bad ones and see what happens. So we're going to find the integral of x cos x dx. That looks pretty simple. So what I'm going to do is pick u. And then whatever's left over is dv. So I'm going to switch to the blue marker for ones that may or may not be good. So we're going to basically be doing this, picking u and then dv. So there's two th choices here. I either go with x or cos x for u. Those are the two reasonable choices, x or cos x. Which one is which? I don't know. Let's just choose. So I'm going to go with let u equal cos x. There's not a choice for dv. So if I let u equal cos x, what's left over? x dx. So it's whatever's left, x dx. So I just picked a u, and then everything else is dv. 
All right, easy question. What is du? Derivative of cosine, negative sine. So that feels just like a, and don't forget your dx, just like any u sub. What about, so we see over here what v, dv, the derivative of v is just x. What is regular v? What is the antiderivative of x? x squared over 2. So any questions on, we picked a u, leftovers are dv, and then we just computed the other two pieces. So any questions on what we just did? So now we're now going to make all these substitutions. So what we were looking at was integral u dv. So what we were just looking at is integral u dv. And we know this is u times v minus integral v du. So we're going to go ahead and make all these substitutions. So what is u times v? That's cos x times x squared over 2. Cos x times x squared over 2 minus the integral v x squared over 2 times du negative sine x dx. And I could rewrite this as x squared over 2 cos x. Two negatives make a positive integral x squared over 2 sine x dx. So we're not done. We still have an integral. Did our integral get better or worse? What was our original integral was x times cos x dx. What's our new integral? x squared. So things got worse, didn't they? So this is what it feels like to pick a bad uh, v, uh, u and dv. So I picked a bad u and dv because it got worse. Why is it worse? Basically because of that power right there. So this integral is worse than the original. Generally, if you get a worse integral, you made a bad choice. Unfortunately, you can make the correct choice, and it may not actually look any better. It may be equally complicated. So we'll do a few examples where it doesn't really get nice. All right. So I chose a bad u and du, a uh, bad u and dv. So let's make the opposite choice this time. So I'm going to start over in the black marker. So we're going to try again. Integral x cos x dx. All right, the other choice, let u equal, so I went with cos x last time. Let's just go with regular x. So the other choice for u. What's left over? Everything else. So dv is everything else, which is cos x dx. Now what I need is du and regular v. So figure out what is du, so that's super easy, derivative of x. v is the antiderivative of cosine, so guess and check. So go ahead and get du and regular v. So you should have gotten 1 dx, or your du is 1 dx, and then v is sine x. You can always try guess and check. Is it positive or negative sign? Just write positive sign. Check it. If you're wrong, it was negative sign. All right, I'm going to make all these substitutions now. So what we started out with was u dv. We're going to get u v minus integral v du. Here's a really good time to make sure your u's don't look like your v's. So if your V's, you can see that my V's don't have a sharp point. So I compensate by making sure my U's have a tail. If my U's lost their tail, it would look almost exactly the same. 
So make sure you know what is a U and what is a V. All right, making these substitutions, we have U V, which is X sine X minus integral V, which is sine X, DU, which is just DX. Is our integral better? Oh yeah, you can totally get this antiderivative. So go ahead and do it. <laughs> so antiderivative of sine hopefully is cosine. I'm going to check the derivative of cosine is negative sine. Is that right? Yeah. yeah. So because of that, I need a, rig, a plus right there. So it should be plus cos x, so derivative is minus sine x. At some point, you need a plus c. I bring in the plus c when I'm done with my last antiderivative. So that's when I bring in my plus c. So this is when the final antiderivative is finished. All right, so there is your first integration by parts question. Generally, I'll start with the easiest one first, so this one was pretty easy. How did we know beforehand? So if we go back up with the blue pen, what was an indication I had a bad choice before I even got past uh, this step right here? So on the screen, what indication would I have that this would be getting worse? So here is the indication of where it was getting worse. My second substitution choice down here, where was the indication it was getting better? So there's two places. V didn't get any more complicated, and DU got less complicated. So here was, right here, was where I realized I was probably going to be on the right track here. So this is less complicated. And over here, it was not more complicated. So it was like a similar level of complexity. How about if I go delta complexity equals zero? Change of complexity is nothing. All right. So we lost complication on the left side, great, and we didn't pick up any extra bad complication on the right side. OK. That is how a lot of your use substitutions are going to go. You're going to realize, ah, oh, something's getting better. I'm probably on the right track. If something's getting worse, you're probably not on the right track. All right, next up, antiderivative ln x dx. All right, looking at this, you should think, oh, I should already know the antiderivative natural log. You don't. It's not on your formula sheet, or at least not yet, unless you looked ahead and put on extra stuff. What calculus facts do I know about the natural log? I know the definition. What do I know about the natural log when it comes to calculus? I know a couple limits. I can go to zero from the positive side and go to infinity. I know the derivative, right? So let's write down every calculus fact you know. Basically, I know the derivative of natural log of x. So what do we know? d dx ln x. What is derivative of natural log? All right, 1 over x. All right, so I know that. So when it go to, obviously, we're doing integration by parts, so I need to pick a u, pick a dv. All 
All right, it looks like there's only one choice, which is correct, but the other thing that's invisible, you can think of, there's a times of one right there. So one of them is just gonna be the number one, and the other one is going to be ln x. All right, so let's let u equal one, dv equals ln x. Uh, dx. All right, next step, what is du? This is easy. Zero. So I'm going to write zero dx. What is regular v? And if I knew the answer to this, I would have just written, oh, that's the antiderivative, right? So this is what I'm trying to find. So this is what I'm looking for. Uh, your first indication that this was probably going to be weird was the zero that showed up. So that right there shows you something's weird. Zero is a very special number in most, most things in math. So this thing would disappear. So that's a big indication of uh, this is not going to work out. All right, so this is bad. So let's forget all this. The fact I know, I know the derivative natural log, which means which of these two am I taking derivative of? I'm taking derivative of u. So u should be natural log, and I'm going to take a derivative of that. So pick u equals ln x. What's left over? Not very much. Just dx is left over. So dv, you could write it as 1 dx if you want. Totally OK, or just regular dx. Doesn't matter. So compute du, which is already on the board and then compute v, which is super easy antiderivative, antiderivative of 1. So you should get du is 1 over x and v is x. So go ahead and make these substitutions in the integration by parts formula right there. So you should be able to finish off both the integrals, or the, the integral you get after that. It was pretty easy. So calculus questions. All right, so you saw me derive the integration by parts formula, so I didn't pull it out of nowhere. We started out with the product rule and then carefully did some weird stuff, some arithmetic, some calculus, and got to the uh, u dv. Uh, integral, a way to rewrite that. So everything I wrote down should at least make sense of where it came from, but how can I check if maybe I made a mistake somewhere? How do you check your antiderivative? Take derivative. So what does the derivative give me? What's the derivative of x ln x? I have a little product rule. Derivative will be ln x plus x times 1 over x. So it'll be ln x plus 1 minus 1. So those two will cancel out with the product rule. So there is the antiderivative of natural log of x. Not really 
maybe exactly what you would have thought. But it uses this weird product -y rule. Okay, next up. Integral x squared e to the x dx. So let's talk about where could e to the x go? What is the derivative of e to the x? e to the x. What's the antiderivative of e to the x? e to the x. So as far as e to the x is concerned, does it matter where e to the x goes? Nope. So hopefully, the other one will have, be, have a stronger preference as to where to put it. So e to the x doesn't really tell me where to put it. What's the other choice? x squared. What's the derivative of x squared? 2x. So we lost a power. What's the antiderivative of x squared? x cubed over 3. So I'd pick up a power. So that means it's better to take a derivative of x squared than an antiderivative. So I want to go x squared, put it in for u. So I'm going to be taking a derivative of x squared, which is good. And then dv is all the leftovers, ex dx. So compute du and regular v. So any questions on why that's a good choice? All right, go ahead and make the substitution. So turn this back into uv minus integral v du. So I just brought the negative 2 outside, the constant multiple rule. How does our new integral compare to our original integral? It's really similar. What is the only difference? E to the x squared. Yep, we lost a power of x. So I still don't know the antiderivative of x times e to the x. What can I do? to figure out this antiderivative, x e to the x. u sub is a pretty good idea. Except if I make u equal x, we've seen that doesn't do anything useful. The other choice is e to the x. If I let u equal e to the x, I'll have this x hanging out over here that I can't really get rid of. So let's try integration by parts instead. So this is the second time. So we're going to pick u and dv. So my choice for u is either x or e to the x, and then the opposite will be dv. So why is x a good choice for u? It's a derivative. Basically, there will be no more u's. So left over, dv is e to the x dx again. So du. Derivative of x is 1 dx. Antiderivative e to the x is e to the x. So now we're ready to rewrite this antiderivative. x squared e to the x minus 2 times, if you want to be careful, I am taking out what's inside the square brackets. I'm going to be a little careful because there's a negative 2 in front of it. So it's negative 2 times everything that I write in here. Negative 2 times uv, so uv x e to the x minus integral v du.
So on the board, I distributed the negative 2 and integrated at the same time. I only did that because the antiderivative is e to the x, so it's like the easiest antiderivative. I don't really recommend doing calculus and algebra steps at the same time. It's not the best uh, way to go. Maybe making two algebra steps at the same time is okay, but not, not really mixing algebra and calculus can be a little dangerous, unless you're a professional. So how can I check if this is right? Derivative. So what's derivative look like? Well, I'm going to get a product rule here. It's going to be 2x e to the x plus x squared e to the x. So how is that 2x going to disappear? Very carefully with one of the parts of the derivative here. And then this product rule is going to give me two pieces. The second piece better cancel out something else, which will be the derivative of this piece. So if you carefully do product rule a couple times, you'll see things sort of pair up and cancel out. That's generally the way the uh, integration by parts works. So now we're going to do a question that will feel uh, very strange. Well, all these should have felt very strange because it's all new techniques. This one will feel even more strange. So we're going to integrate e to the x times cos x dx. So the derivative of e to the x is e to the x. Antiderivative of e to the x, also e to the x. What's the derivative of cos x? Negative sine. Negative sine x? Antiderivative? Regular sine x. So that doesn't really matter. It doesn't really change very much either, does it? There's a negative one way, not a negative the other way. So this is one of the few times where it doesn't matter which way you go for u and dv, because they're both going to be almost the same thing. So here is one of those examples where there's not a good choice, nor is there a bad choice. There's just a choice. So let's go, for no good reason, let's just go e to the x is u. And then dv is the leftovers, cos x dx. All right, so go ahead and finish off. Get du, regular v. And then substitute all that stuff back in. Questions on this form. So it didn't really get better, didn't really get worse. We're kind of at the same antiderivative. So when in doubt, try basically try the same thing again. So we're going to do, when I say the same thing, we're going to let u equal e to the x this time. Now dv is going to be sine x dx. So underline, what I underline, I'm going to go for dv. So I did my guess and check antiderivative on sine. I guessed cosine, but it should be negative cosine. 
So go ahead and make that substitution. depends on uh, the problem. So generally something with uh, you know a power of x, like that two problems ago or one problem ago we had x squared and we had to do it twice to knock it down to you know a constant basically. Uh, this one you can see that no matter how many derivatives I take it's not going nothing's going to disappear. So this is one of those problems where it doesn't get it neither gets nicer nor does it get worse. It just changes form. It would be minus, but there's three, there's really three negative signs hiding in there. All right, so we're pretty much exactly where we started. So what I'm going to do is rewrite where we started on the right side of this equal sign. So we're all done with calculus. We've done a full circle. All right. We're not exactly where we started. How can I solve for what I have underlined? So here's how your brain should be thinking. How would you solve for C in this little silly algebra equation I put up here? You can do it. Add C. Add C. And then divide by two. There we go. That's all we're going to do. Easy algebra one move right here. Collect like terms. So we're going to add to the other side. E x sine x plus E of the x cos x equals two integral e x cos x dx. All right, last move, divide everything by 2. And somewhere I need a plus c. So I'll do that right here. Plus c equals So your brain should be thinking, oh, that was really neat. That would be less neat if you put it on a quiz or a midterm. Because you think outside the box. So I won't put this type, this type of problem on a midterm or a quiz. Where you have this sort of pattern that you have to discover and then, oh, it repeated, and then solve for your integral. That's a little bit tricky in my opinion. I'll have plenty of tricky questions to ask you, it just won't be one of this type. going to we'll look at the definite integration by parts and then do one problem from there. So what does definite integration mean? It's fundamental theorem of calculus.
So it's when you do an antiderivative, but you have endpoints. All right, so here's a definite integral. Integral from a to b, fx, dx. You just plug in, you find the antiderivative, then you plug in the second endpoint, subtract, and you plug in the first endpoint. So you've done this problem a whole lot. Now, what's going to happen now is your integral is going to get more difficult to find your antiderivative. So how do endpoints play into this whole integration by parts? Uh, pretty much the way that you would expect. So if we go integral a to b, uh, fx g prime x dx equals you have fx gx from a to b minus the integral a to b f prime x gx dx so this part right here Just looking at this, this is F, FB, GB minus FA, GA. If I could write FA, GA. All right. So you just plug in the B endpoint and subtract when you plug in the A endpoint. So we'll do one example here. Antiderivative, 0 to 4, x e to the negative x dx. All right, pick a u, pick a dv. This one's pretty obvious. Does x change more when you take derivatives and antiderivatives, or does e to the x, e to the negative x change more? Which one changes a lot more when you take derivatives or antiderivatives? <coughs> x can take a derivative. X does. E to the x, e to the negative x doesn't change very much. It would just become negative. So e to the x doesn't have a strong preference as to should I be taking derivatives or antiderivatives. X has a very strong preference. So u equals x, dv e negative x dx. So go ahead and do integration by parts here. did was just leaving that vertical bar with the 0, 4. That's the only real difference. I'm going to plug in 4 and then plug in 0 and subtract. All right, so I'm going to do this plug in 4, plug in 0 right now. So this is minus e to the minus 4 times 4 minus minus e to the 0 times 0. plus integral 0 to 4 e to the minus x dx. So we have negative 4 over e to the fourth power plus 0. Antiderivative e to the negative x is e, negative e to the negative x from 0 to 4. And then just take care of this. So we have minus e to the minus 4 minus negative e to the 0. So we have minus 4 over e to the 4th minus 1 over e to the 4th. 
Ooh, I need a plus C somewhere. No, I don't need a plus C. We have endpoints. Okay. E to the zero is one, so we get a plus one. And there is the final answer right there. Yep, I can go common denominator uh, super easily. So what is that, minus 5? Yeah, that's really easy to do. Minus 5 over e to the fourth plus 1. Definitely better form.